I'm Stuart Painter, CFO of Oxford Biomedica. Um, we're the second London listed company in a row to be in front of you, but we are slightly different to, to MaxSite, and uh, we are the viral vector company, specifically on, on Lenti. And let me take you through some brief slides to give you a picture of where we are. Um, and then I'm going to have a sit down and chat with, with Dane. So, yeah, we, we've been around 20 years as well. Um, we span out of Oxford University in 1996, and um, it's taken the best part of 20 years of know-how to, uh, to do what we've, we've done. We're about $550 million market cap on London at the moment with about 450 employees. And our, our proposition is that we are market leaders in the lentiviral vector space. Um, we are very proud to partner with Novartis as their sole vector manufacturer for, for the Kim Raya product, uh, the first uh, approved gene therapy in the US. And um, yeah, it, it, it's been a, a ride. Um, we've, we've been around for 20 years doing stuff and um, you know, when, when CAR-T became a thing, it really, the space really picked up in lentiviral vector and now we're trying to uh, make, make the most of our opportunity. So we, we know it's a growing market um, you know, the FDA are, are very open to saying there'll be many more gene and cell therapies on the market as time goes by. We r have a profitable platform, so the work we do with our partners, Novartis being our, our lead partner, and I'll show you a slide on, on the rest of our partners and what we're doing, um, actually, you know, generates cash for us. And in terms of utilizing that cash in the best way, um, we are looking to make seeded investments back into the platform technologies so we can license that back out and also we develop our own products which is important and I'll tell you a little bit, bit about one of our lead products which was recently um, licensed out to Axavant. So a bit of a busy slide but this is basically our strategy. We, we have a lentiviral vector platform, the lentivector platform that goes across the top. Um, that comprises of uh, IP, patents and know-how, um, we have uh, expertise in uh, you know, some, some of the best lentivirus vector people in the world. Um, we have facilities all in Oxford. Um, we have three GMP suites currently. We're running at capacity, and we've just we're in the process of building a facility with another four to more than double our capacity. And so we, we, we're doing our bit to try and alleviate the bottleneck of uh, of, of the the vector manufacturing issue, which I think we all know there is one with the number of uh, products coming to market. Um, so yeah, I mean, on one side, on the blue side there, that's the work we do with our partners. You can see some of those names at the bottom there. Uh, we've talked a little bit about Novartis. We've also got Sanofi through the bioverative relationship we have. Orchard Therapeutics is a key partner of ours, and we, are, uh, 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 we hold about 900,000 shares of, of Orchard Therapeutics, having taken stock instead of cash whilst uh, doing the, the platform development for them. And we've got Boehringer and the UK Cystic Fibrosis Gene Therapy Consortium. On the other side, it's, uh, it's our own products which we develop, um, all lentiviral vectors. We have, we partnered out two programs with Sanofi uh, for Star Guards and Ushers, and we've recently partnered out a Parkinson approach with Axavant, um, and they released some data on that last week. Um, and, we, and we think as a dual-pronged approach, there are some significant synergies. Um, we, we are very proud to do the work with our partners, which is, is fully funded, and we learn an awful lot about particular therapeutic areas. We transfer that knowledge back into our R&D facilities, and the, the innovations we make when we're developing our own products, of course, we share back with our partners to make the most commercially viable propositions for our partners we can. Um, so here's the platform pipeline. Um, you can see Kim Rye is on the market, and, and all of these the, this work we do with our partners comes with multiple revenue streams, but importantly, everything comes with a low single digits royalty. Um, and so from the Kim Raya side, that's a royalty that's now flowing. Um, and it, we have a commercial supply agreement with, with Novartis. There was a three-year agreement signed in the middle of 2017 um, to be their sole vector manufacturer. And you know, they're doing some fantastic work as you can see, not just in Kim Rai, but the next generation, and we're, we're proud to support those guys trying to, uh, trying to reimagine medicine as they are. Um, it, just a few highlights of some of the other stuff. The, the, the haemophilia approach is an interesting one um, because many, there are many AAV approaches, of course, to haemophilia that are much further advanced than this particular one. 
Um, yeah, the thesis here is that we believe that, that Lentivector has some advantages um, over AAV, which will, will potentially allow pediatric treatment. Um, so, you know, we're working very hard in the preclinical stages to, to develop um, a, a true targeting vector for, for Sanofi. Um, just to, for the sake of time, just speeding up a little bit. So, for, from our product pipeline, you can see the three products we've already got out licensed. Parkinson's, um, and, and I know Axavan presented earlier, they released a patient, on, a patient data last week with a couple of patients in the, their first cohort for the, for the phase one, two trial. Very positive, that's moving forward. Um, Stargars and Usher's out with Sanofi, as I said, they were licensed out in 2009. They were the, the two early, one of the two earliest um, gene therapies to be out licensed. Um, and then these are the unencumbered assets, the bottom six of which we are particularly uh, excited about our, our approach for wet AMD, which we have some very, very good and long-term expression data for um, out to six or seven years now with unchanged expression from a trial we did back in 2009. So we're working very hard. We're, 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 we're well-funded and we can afford to make these innovations from our own cash flow. And just a little bit about the, the, um, the, uh, the, the financials. Um, as a CFO, this makes me happy. So we, um, we grew revenues very strongly last year. We've just done our earnings release. And as you can see, we swung into a profit for the first time in 2018. Um, you know, it, it's not a model we want to leverage for profit quite yet. You know, there are so many investment opportunities back into both our platform and our process that we are looking to make those investments, not make money yet. Um, so it, it's an interesting time to be in, in the, the lentiviral vector space. So now I'm going to sit down with Dane and answer some questions. Thank you. Thanks Stuart, for giving us a nice overview of uh, what Oxford's working on. Um, I think for, for everyone in the room, it might be interesting to uh, focus in on uh, the club aspect of Oxford being one of the few companies in the gene therapy space that's actually been through the whole process of clinical trials and now a commercial product. Obviously, I'm referencing Kim Raya. Um, but as you worked with Novartis uh, through the process uh, on Tisagen Leclusal, what were some of the learnings and, and what are some of the things that your team's taken away as you think about developing these programs going forward? Yeah, thanks for the question. It, it's, um, we, we learned mostly everything. I mean, it was, it was a, a trailblazing sort of thing that Novartis asked, asked, asked us to do. Um, we, we learned that the sort of technology we were running, which was a cell factory process, was not going to be good enough in terms of the long-term commercial viability of, of cell and gene therapy. And we had to, with Novartis's help, innovate a bioreactor process at 200 liters, which was going to be you know, the, the future for, for the Kim Rai product. Um, you know, they, they, they semi-funded that and we kept the IP on, those, on that, uh, that process. So it really was transformational for the company. We, we pivoted for the first 17 years of our existence from 1997, we were a product development company. Um, we happened to be developing those products, which I mentioned earlier, wet AMD and Parkinson's, which we treated back in the late 2000s. We treated 36 patients. Um, in order to get vector into, into human beings without doing you know, proper gene therapy, um, the vector had to be of a, of, of a quality um, that no one else was really reproducing at the time, and, and that's what Novartis were interested in initially with us. And then we, we went on a journey with them to, to sort of re-engineer the whole process, and uh, we, we've, we've, we consider ourselves to be very fortunate to be able to do that with Novartis, and we've come out the other side. With a, with a strong marketable proposition now that we can, we can put to our partners in terms of a 200 liter bioreactor process for making Lenti. And so uh, some of that success has, has led the company to substantially build out the manufacturing capabilities um, with, I, I think, a pretty aggressive 2020 plan uh, to significantly increase uh, those capabilities. Um, if we think about uh, where you're going to from a manufacturing perspective over the next 12 to 24 months, uh, what, what does that get the company? What, what can you take on from programs or what are you planning to uh, advance in some of the earlier programs that would need uh, scaled up manufacturing capabilities? Yeah, I mean, we, we identified this time last year that we were gonna hit a manufacturing bottleneck 
in the early part of 2020 with the partners programs we currently have. And that's, not, that's to say nothing of, of new partners coming on board. Um, so, of course, we, we, we did something about that and we, f we fully funded a 100,000 square feet facility in Oxford um, that's going to more than double our capacity from three to seven clean rooms in the first instance. Half of the facility we've, we've gonna, we're going to leave fallow so that we can modularly add clean rooms as and when we need them in the future. Uh, we can also do some clever things like adding two bioreactors into a single clean room and, of course, we can scale up the volume of, of, a, of a bioreactor when, when we are, you know, when we've characterized the, that process. So, you know, I, I think we're well set for the future. Um, you know, it, it is an investment, but we, you know, we know from the number of clinical trials which have started in Lenti, um, and we know from the regulatory pathway that the FDA is setting, you know, this is just the start of, of gene and cell therapy. There are three, three approved products right now. And you know who knows where we're going to be in ten years, but you know we we want to make sure that we can you know, take on as many partners as we can in the short term, because you know that they are our shots on goal. You know all of those partner programs came with a low single digits royalty, and you know they can be meaningful, meaningful amounts of money when um, you know, these these products are hitting peak sales. So that leads us to the next topic of um, what do you want to be when you grow up. Uh, so yeah, you had a nice, uh, as you stated, a, a pretty uh, extended childhood into adolescence now. Uh, but you do have a, a pretty rich pipeline, both partnered and and un unencumbered at the moment. Um, you know, for investors, how do you how do you lead them to to understand where the value creation is going to be over the next five years for Oxford Biomedica? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's something we've we've certainly uh, talked about internally a lot in the last sort of eight months because. Um, we, we mobilized most of our company to, to get behind the Novartis push to get this thing on the market. It was a huge effort both, both by us and by them. Um, and, you know, now we've seen some success with that and, we, you know, we've got a commercial supply agreement. We, we were quick in identifying where the real value kickers are in, in our business model. And, and we identify them as sort of twofold. So the first one is when one of our partners' programs gets to the market because it then ceases to be a clinical supply agreement, it turns into a commercial supply agreement, and you can see you know, batch revenues and royalties for many years ahead in, many, in, in most cases. Um, the other value driver is, is doing a, a nice deal on an unencumbered asset. Um, you know, where we have the extra optionality right now, though, is that you know, because we're producing cash, um, and the way that gene and cell therapy works in the clinic, is that if you're picking the right products, you can get a very early read on, on efficacy in humans, which you know, brings nice value to the investor. Um, and so you know, we are going to screen those products which I showed you on the unencumbered list, and we are going to, to uh, you know, look to take these through the phase one, two trials ourselves. Um, we, were, we were prepared to do that with the Parkinson's product before Axivant came in and in licensed that. Um, so, you know, this is the sort of DNA of where we're going now. In the past couple of years, it's been very much a 90-10 effort on the, on the platform versus partners, uh, product side, and we're slightly tweaking that to maybe an 80-20, 75-25 effort. So, you know, we, we've grown up, as you said, and we need to make some decisions about where we want to live, and, um, and we're active in doing that. So uh, let's see if you can do this in 41 seconds. Um, for the remainder of 2019, uh, for, for investors and, and partners, what are the key milestones that your team hopes to achieve? Yeah, I mean, I, I can do it in, in 28 seconds. So, um, you know, what, what, we're, what our premise is to the investor in the marketplace is that, you know, we have, we have now built capacity and we've scaled up our internal sort of capabilities to the tune of you know, 600 people by the end of the year in order to bring on new partners. So, you know, we are looking to sign new partnership deals. We're active in that. We're, we're very confident of doing that. And we also are looking to progress our own uh, proprietary pipeline, either into the clinic ourselves by early 2020 or further out licensing opportunities for, for, to bring value to the investor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dane.